Okay, I'd like to call the January 11th regular meeting to order. Please rise for the pledge of allegiance. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. The music to the music department. Great. Okay. So um, we are very lucky to have with us tonight um, Meg Kerwin, Noah Fields, uh, Norma Marcasani, and Kate Adams. I think that, yep, all four. The, they're not, they are like the Avengers, but just cooler. Um, <laughs> and they are here from the, uh, to represent the music department because uh, the Tallinn Public Schools got an award. Um, I received a letter from Senator Murphy and uh, Senator Murphy's office, and um, Senator Murphy provided a certificate and also um, a brief narrative for us. And uh, we, these, these, um, this department has done an amazing job for years and years and years. Um, and this isn't the first time that they've won us, and they've won a lot of other things too. Um, okay. and, oh, that they really do make make Tomlin special with all the special programming they do and the opportunities they offer for children, um, the guidance they provide, uh, the memories they provide, the life skills they provide. Um, there's really you know, no other department as, I think, impactful in so many uh, ways. And so it's just great to have the opportunity to be able to recognize them tonight. Um, and so officially the Tomlin Public Schools have honored with the Best Communities for Music Education designation from the NAMM Foundation for its outstanding commitment to music education. In its 23rd years, the Best Communities for Music Education designation award is awarded to districts that demonstrate outstanding achievement in efforts to provide music access and education to all students. Um, so what I'd like to do is just kind of show you all the certificate that um that we received which we were going to put into a little frame uh, we'll do that soon signed by uh christopher murphy the u.s senator um and i want to just bring you all up and, and shake your hands and or covid related shake however you want to do it and then give you a chance megan or, or any of you to kind of talk uh, maybe we should move and we can have everyone take a little picture over here so. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you can see there it is. All right, don't try to forge the signature for any of your spots. Take a thing. Why don't you guys come on up there and put you on all special media? And I'm going to give you guys a slide. Yeah. 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 Oh my God! 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 Oh Good to see you. Yeah. Thank you. Good to see you. Right? You know, I'm trying. I'm getting there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, let's just get over. Um, again, there's one other uh, acknowledgement for tonight. I just wanted to point out that um, that is not only the faux stained bird project, um, the art of Lewis Comfort Tiffany, all grade six students, uh, they're all the art of grade six students here. So as you look around the room, uh, Wyatt Jackson, Eloise Shadell, Lila Shuznicki, uh, Rose Buckler, uh, Isa Morrow, Fisher Morrell, I'm sorry, Fisher Farrell, uh, Sarah Fargo, Haley Alford, Elijah Oldham, Reagan Grant, and Chloe Lundgren. There's a Lundgren here. Uh, hold on to the bar. Madeline Alexander Babiak, and Alyssa Rondon. So this is the artwork you see 
all around the room. Okay. And I did want to explain the little letter that you get in the, the mail. She was very excited to get that. <laughs> it was very cute. So it's on the way out, big place in there really quick. Okay. Um, we're not changing anything with the agenda. We got a packed agenda. So let's move to the approval of minutes. I'll entertain the motion to approve the December 14th minutes. So moved. We'll second. Okay. okay. Um, everyone's here. So that all in favor can say aye. Anyone that appears can say nay. And we'll go from there because we don't have to do a roll call. Oh, no, Jenna, okay, Jen is on there. So, yes, we will do the roll call. I looked around. I was like, it's a full house. No, it's not. <laughs> so, if you could just state your name so it saves me from saying it when you <laughs> state your vote, that'd be great. Jane Registered, aye. Christina Floyd, aye. Christine Griffin, aye. Jacob, aye. Sophia, aye. Dana, aye. Tony Ho, aye. Jen Gale, Shan, aye. I'm not high as well, so they are approved as is. Okay. Do we'll open this up for public participation. Um, we don't have any necessarily in the room. So if you are online, if you could please raise your hand and be called, and you have two minutes to do so. If you could please list your name and your address for the record, and we will go from there. We will accept the email. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can you go ahead? Uh, let's go. Hold on a second. Can you mute Mr. Kennedy on here? Sorry, guys. Thank you. Got it. Okay. Katie, go ahead. Katie Murray, eight Lisa Lane. Um, I'm here as a parent and resident in Tolland and not in any of my volunteer roles. Um, I wanted to bring to the board's attention my concern about uh, the staffing at Tolland Middle School. Um, as many of you may know, or maybe not, um, the eighth grade team is down a science teacher. Uh, an email communication did come out this evening, actually, uh, saying that uh, they're hoping to have a science teacher in for the beginning of February. Um, but that means September, October, November, December, and January, eighth grade was down a science teacher. Um, and I, you know, having another, the other science teacher cover with uh, substitutes has been uh, a challenge, I think, for the students. Um, last week, my eighth grader reported that only one of their regular education teachers was in that day. Um, and I, I understand from uh, Dr. Willett that there have been some illness, there's some COVID related issues, but to hear that only one academic teacher was in for eighth grade is very concerning. Um, so I wanted to bring to the board's attention the fact that staffing at Tallinn Middle School might need a little bit more, um, more attention from this board. And I hope that this is something that you look into. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Um, at this time, is anyone else, if you could please raise your hand and you'll be called on for two minutes. Um, can I raise like my hand with my voice? Katie, go ahead. <laughs> Kate Ballow. Go ahead. Um, thank you very much uh, for accommodating me. Um, so Kate Ballow, 80 Towns Green. I just wanted to add my thanks to the music department and to all public schools for all they have done and all they continue to do to support our students um, with this really important element of the arts in their lives. Um, we've had the pleasure of connecting with the, a variety of the departments over the years, including um, band, um, all the way from TAS with those wonderful beginnings and up through the middle school and looking forward to high school. Just wanted to add my thanks and say that, deserve, that award was so well-deserved and we really appreciate it in our family. Thank you, Kate Did she give her address? Yes. I guess she did. Let's make sure. Um, at this time, anyone else would like to raise their hand? Seeing none, I will close out the public participation. We can move on to correspondence. Jacob. Right. So this correspondence covers everything since the 14th. Let's start that. 
Um, we had an email expressing frustration over school bus operations. Author states that the bus is frequently late to pick up her child, resulting in lost instructional time, and the bus company has not responded appropriately. And we also had an email concerning adequate staffing levels at the middle school. The author expresses concern that teacher coverage is not consistent. Thank you. At this time, I'll open up to points of information for any board members. If you do, please raise your hand and be called on to say anything, or Dr. Willa, if you have anything. A question regarding one of um, our Miss Murray's questions. So I, I, I'm assuming that there is a job application right out for that position. Would I be incorrect yep. in saying that? In fact, um, we did have a, a person accept the job today. Okay. So that was good. good um, but we have had Bridges candidates have gotten to the end, um, and we were not able to offer them enough compensation. Mm -hmm. I know it's a difficult time to hire over the year, but I did want to get clarification on that. Yeah, that's okay. the primary reason we have to have it. We did have others. They just, we got to that point. It's uh, it's based on contract and what you can offer and what step, and we can only go to a certain maximum step. And those individuals are interested in that step. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hey, anyone else at this time? Yeah. <clears throat> um. So, are these based on the current contracts that we have open with the unions that we can only offer that certain amount? And yeah, they're just negotiated. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 uh, part of the you know the process, but um, but you can only offer this. So our step six for six years experience, so to speak, mm -hmm. they may come from a place where their step six has a significant amount more what they are paid. So uh, while we do have candidates and have gotten people to a final stage, typically at that stage, that conversation point, right. and there are there's only so much we can do. Something for guess negotiation conversations. Yeah, I just wanted to you know voice my my excitement and my my appreciation to the music the department and just uh, to tackle what Dr. Willett said how well deserved they are for this recognition and this award. Um, with, with three of my kids having gone or still going through uh, the town schools, I can firsthand attest for how their lives have been touched by by this program. Uh, and by the people that invest so much of their, their time and their energy to it. So, you know, just personally speaking, you know, thank you. Thank you to all of you. I will say that we are working on the situation at the middle school. And it is a combination of, of things that she that Ms. Murray had mentioned. Um, illnesses, bereavement. It, it's just that there's just so many things happening right now with respect to that. And we're still... I just had somebody send me uh, their COVID results as I was coming here today. Mm -hmm. It's still impacting staffing, probably more so than, than anything else right now. That's one of the things along with um, shortages, bereavements, things like that. And um, there are some new state laws and things that, um, you know, we have people uh, going on leave for a variety of things due to maybe paternity. It's just a very difficult time to make sure you have all the staff that you need, not just here, but a lot of other places too. Still, it is it is a serious, it is a, a very important thing for us to address and we're working very hard to do so. Okay, thank you. Uh, I will close that out and we have uh, student reps. Um, before we begin, we have to let you know that due to finals, we will be leaving after we speak, although we would have loved to hear and to all the finances. <laughs> <laughs> think about it, we, we would have loved that. Um, but to begin, um, student council was approved for a winter pep rally, although the whole student body doesn't know yet. We're supposed to keep it like on the down low. Because out of the bag now. <laughs> it's out of the bag now. Yeah. Well, um, so we're trying to reinvent more games we're going to do to try to like spice it up. So we're going to keep the usual pebble board because like that's just like infamous. And, you know, we have to have the seniors try to beat the sophomores, you know how it is. And we're trying to think of other games. You know, we're going to try to incorporate a unified friends basketball where maybe like varsity members from the girls and boys basketball team could play against the unified friends basketball team. And I feel like it could be fun and promote the unified friends basketball game because there is one coming up, which would be pretty exciting. And then we are still coming up with more different games we can do. We're thinking of one where like we take a big t-shirt and like it's like a relay and you like all have to put it on, but we're still thinking of more suggestions. Mm -hmm. 
um, on Mira's phone. We have some spirit week dates. They have been confirmed. Um, so I don't remember the dates for them. Sorry. Uh, one day we have a sports day. Uh, the next day we have a Zoom day, which is where you dress super formal on top and then wear like sweatpants with pajama pants on the bottom. Uh, very excited for that. <laughs> of course, on the actual pep rally day, we have class color day. The senior, sorry, the freshman class has been changed back to yellow. We're working with the school artists to finally like get all of the colors incorporated into one eagle. That'll be fun to see. Um, we're doing senior citizen day where you basically will dress like you're 100 years old, you know, get a blouse, get some overall pantyhose. Hey, hey, yep. Um, and then we will also have a red day where students just wear red and that'll be on the same day as Valentine's Day when there will be senior Valentine's. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Um, next on our agenda, we're going to talk about the DECA testing. It's supposed to be the day after we come back from the Quebec trip. So is it Valentine's Day? It will not be Valentine's Day. It's the 13th. The 13th, so the day before Valentine's Day. So um, tomorrow we have a DECA meeting, so we're going to be talking about test strategies and should we use something or not looking forward to. Yes. Um, on, back on to DECA and business, Shark Tank happened. Uh, last week, it was very good. Everyone did a great job. Uh, our judges were great. We learned a lot. We did a lot. We said a lot. Everything was really awesome. Um, next, um, we uh, had an advisory yesterday on Tuesday to talk about setting for finals, some techniques, ways to become less stressed, although it's kind of difficult. <laughs> um, but teachers are really like making it a point to like have students become less stressed or if they are stressed out, they're making it so they can have students come to them and talk about it, which I think is very helpful. Mm -hmm. And finally, the GSA is hosting an event with the uh, Tall and Mansfield Fields P Flag chapter. Uh, they're having a run and roll roller skating event. So that will be on Valentine's Day, I think. Nope, that's not true. I'm very sorry. That will be on Super Bowl Sunday. And um, it's just an event. There will be prizes. Uh, it's just a really fun time. It's a private event. It is $25 pre-sale, $30 at the door. And it sounds like a lot of fun. And if you have any questions or comments, <laughs> please present them now. <laughs> any comments or questions for them? The only thing I would say is don't do what I did for the DECA test because I failed every single one. Oh. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's my advice. What did you do? <laughs> it's what I didn't do. Is, Study? Is, is more exactly. Mm -hmm. Role plays, eight. The test, yeah. So, good job. Speaking of finals, do you guys know if, are they being weighted at 10% or are they back to 20? They're at 10. Yeah, that's nice. Yes, so that's very nice. nice. <laughs> Enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, finals, uh, they don't make a huge impact no. anymore, which is pretty nice. Yeah. Pretty sweet. But the Yukon finals are 15% now, which I learned yesterday and I was not very pleased. <laughs> and she will be leaving after this to go study. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Zoom day sounds like it was very good. <laughs> yeah. Hoping to get public participation for it because usually like maybe upperclassmen, I feel like everyone in general just like thinks it's like cringy to participate where it really isn't. But like people are like nervous, like, oh, my friends aren't going to dress up. Maybe I won't. But I think as a student body, we all just need to like do it because mm -hmm. it's just so much more fun. Yeah. yeah. And we have a pretty good promotional team. So hoping they can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do that. I appreciate the excitement. I think it's exciting. How is the Shark Tank event? Oh, my God. You don't even know. Yeah. You don't even know. It was so fun. I wore pink. Um. Yeah, it was really great. Everyone really uh, went to their part. Everyone got offers. Um, and it was just, it was really fun. Yeah. And it's much better than the 30 page business report then. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's a great activity. And I'm excited for it to keep going. Yeah. I saw the pictures. Didn't you guys, um, when the superintendent's on page, yeah. post the pictures? Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. I like when I hope to see some of them. That was cute. 
Um, any other other questions, comments? Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you. Have fun studying. Thank and, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. okay. Let's move on into the superintendent's report. We have Senator Gordon as our first guest, so you can come up. Replacing Dan Champagne. Oh, completely replacing. <laughs> I'll do my best. Yeah, he offered to uh, come tonight to touch base with the board, see if the board had any questions uh, with respect to the state legislature and the Senate. And, uh, and just uh, you know to reach out to us. So thank you very much. We really do appreciate that. Well, thank you for inviting me. Um, I appreciate what you guys do. I'm a town official in Woodstock. I'm going on to my 16th year as chair of planning and zoning. So normally I'm on the other side of the table, having people yell and scream at me about their land use applications. So it's actually nice to be on this side, mm -hmm. uh, you know, of the table. So I don't have any of that responsibility. But thank you for what you guys do. I appreciate it, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm more than happy to look forward to working with you. Uh, it's a big district, 13 towns, uh, so traveling all over the place. Today was actually my day dedicated to be all over the district, so I was fortunately not in Hartford uh, uh, for today, uh, but um, happy to be here, happy to, you know, if you have any questions now or as we move forward, I hope to maintain as much of an open door policy as I can for people to reach out to me. I, you can certainly share with them my contact info if you don't mind. Yeah, we'll do. I don't have my business cards yet because the state, for some reason, is massively slow to get that stuff up to us, which is interesting. Uh, we'll see if I actually get it this session or not. Uh, but otherwise, I would hand those out. But uh, can certainly reach my legislative aide and my team in Hartford. But otherwise, people can certainly reach me if they want. Um, my phone number that will be shared. You can certainly email me, text me. Um, don't be surprised if I answer at like one o'clock at night. I'm usually up that late. I'm a doctor, so I'm used to staying up very late and getting by with very little sleep, uh, which will be good for the legislative sessions. Uh, so that will come in uh, handy for uh, for that. Uh, but the more I know about any concerns, issues, things like that that you have, the better job I can do. And I also like to ask questions. So if I have questions as we roll through the session on things that are coming up for us to make decisions on, I'd like to make as informed decision as I can. Sometimes they don't give us much time. They say, you know, here's something in an hour, we're going into session and voting. So sometimes there's a flurry of activity we do before the vote, but certainly want to be able to know how things impact each of the towns in my district. I uh, view each town as important. Uh, and want to know what goes on, and including community events, things like that, things that happen in the schools. I'm always happy to support and promote all the good things that are being done. I'm also very mindful, and I say this a lot, and I'm going to actually probably get a sign from my Senate office that says this. Uh, Calvin Coolidge, he was Senate president of Massachusetts way, way back in the day, and he said something to the effect that you spend more time fighting against bad things than you do supporting good things. That's actually true in the legislature. Uh, but I also like to promote the good things uh, as much as I can. So as much as I can do to be of help, I'm happy to do that. Uh, and by all means, you know, if you don't have any questions that you think of tonight, happy to hear from them. And I had a good meeting with you, so I appreciate that opportunity as well. And as I had told the superintendent, you know, the door is open for him, you know, for him to reach out to me anytime that I can be of help. And I'm happy to leverage what I can as a state center of working with you know, with the local delegations that represent Tallinn, we have a couple of reps who do, but others uh, to do what we can do to be of uh, help for Tallinn, but also there's a lot of these common issues that a lot of towns face that are common denominator issues with regards to how we're educating our kids and uh, keeping our teachers and keeping our schools up and running. So I've already been having those discussions. I'm not on the education committee. I'm on public safety. I'm on public health. I'm on veterans where I'm ranking member, and I'm actually on appropriations with the budget, uh, which is a monster committee. And I may actually be on some of their education subcommittees. So I'll hear a lot about uh, funding schools uh, in, uh, in Connecticut, more than probably anybody wants to know with massive budget documents. So I'm happy to delve into that. That's perfect, because I know um, our communications committee, Jen, Jennifer Galachan as chair, she um, you know, we're starting to create some letters about the unfunded mandate. So oh, I'm sure you'll be hearing from us at some point. <laughs> and, the, and the Department of Education has heard from me about this as well. 
Uh, my opinion has been for a long time, it hasn't changed, that if the state in its wisdom wants mandates, then it needs to fund them. It shouldn't be dumping them on the backs of the towns. And then if you guys have to explain why it works or doesn't work, um, I have bills in about that. Uh, and I've been setting up meetings with some commissioners uh, about that. I think the Department of Education probably already knows from some of what I've talked with them about that I'm not going to let that issue stay. In fact, I'm submitting legislation. Hopefully, we can get it through. I've already been trying to build up bipartisan support on it. Is, for example, the Department of Education, tell me a list of all of these mandates and tell me exactly which ones you're doing something about. If you're just generating a report and it gets archived somewhere and you're doing nothing with it, why are you doing it? I mean, if it's a good mandate and it's something that they feel is important, then they really need to support it. But if there's mandates that they're just doing nothing with just because it's there and the legislature hasn't gotten rid of them, we should actually do that review and we should get rid of them. I did that in my town with ordinances that we got rid of. That people didn't even know we had, but yet staff was generating stuff on it that nobody read. Uh, so those are things that I'm looking at. I've said this publicly and I continue to say it as a senator now. I believe public education is one of the core responsibilities of state government. I think there's core responsibilities and then there's things that you can do on your wish list if you have the money and the staff for. Public education is one of those in my opinion. I don't believe the state supports that. enough. That comes down to how we can repurpose money in our state budget. If we have a lot of money. It's going to be a big fight how we spend it, uh, but I think that there are some things we can repurpose towards public education to help the towns do the job that needs to be done, educating our kids. That's one of the things I've already been speaking on and speaking with some people in appropriations committee about that. Why do we spend money on some things yet we're shortchanging things like public public education? That makes no sense to me. So I'm not looking to have the state generate more billions of dollars, but I think the money it has can be repurposed. And I'm looking forward to those types of debates to see where that goes. Music to my ears. So thank you for that response. Uh, Floor? So you stole my question, Jeff, or you answered my question. I was going to ask if you were on the education committee, but appropriations is going to work closely with education, like with ECS and the formula. Yeah, so I think so that's my biggest concern really is over the years you saw that it was like minus $300,000 per talent every year for 10 years. Um, it hurts the small towns when they do that. So that's what it very much does. You know, appropriations deals with everything. So anything that needs something in the budget, appropriations is the committee. It's one of the powerful committees because it has a say on the budget. It's separate from the tax writing committees. So on appropriations, I don't know if you've ever seen or been to them, it's like 50 something of us there. And they have 13 subcommittees. Well, you just get each of us gets assigned one or two. I've asked to be on one of the education subcommittees. There's higher education and there's all the rest of education. Uh, I don't know which one I'm going to get assigned to, but I'm looking to see what I can do. But even if I'm not on an education subcommittee, all the subcommittees report to the main committee and we have a chance to go through that. So it's a monster committee. It has so anything with public education that the state funds or should fund. Has to, has to go through appropriations. I have a great opportunity there, ask those questions. The commissioner of education and all her staff is gonna to come to, our, to us for a public hearing and present their budget. We have to wait for the governor to present his budget, which is gonna be coming up soon. Um, and then all the commissioners and the agencies come to us. And we present, we listen, and then we get to ask them questions. And, I'm fine asking them some questions um, and find out why they're doing what they're doing and where they can do better. And one of those is um, the cost sharing formula. I don't believe that formula is working, um, especially doesn't work for, for towns. And I have some small towns in my district. I have Union, which has like 700 people, the smallest town in, uh, I think, the state for population wise. And I hear this everywhere I go in the district that, you know, the formula just isn't working. It needs to be reworked. I put a bill in uh, about that. Uh, I know others are putting bills in about it. So I'm anticipating the education committee is probably going to do something if enough of us submit bills. Special education, I don't think is being funded the way it should. I've submitted bills on that to review. But one of the things I'm mindful of, and nothing against the cities, the cities seem to get the money uh, and a lot of it from the state. Uh, we do support them. And I understand they have 
needs and things like that in population, but it shouldn't be at the expense of the towns. Yeah, and so I'm going to be on the rural caucus and some other caucuses, and I'm going to be one of those voices that's going to be speaking up saying, we're part of Connecticut last time I checked. Uh, we pay taxes here. Why are we not being looked at? So I think more and more, a lot of the legislators in rural towns are speaking up and banding together. I think the rural caucus is actually growing, is my understanding. So I'm hopeful we'll have more of a voice uh, in that regard. Um, Holland isn't an alliance district. Uh, I have Vernon and Thompson, which are, and those are separate issues that we're looking into. But I, I think some of these formulas do need to be reworked. Uh, and also there just needs to be in general more funding, uh, you know, for it. So, you know, I, I don't have a problem advocating for that. I'm a fiscal conservative, so I'm very careful spending other people's money. But when it comes to certain core government responsibilities, if they're spending money and they're not spending it right, and it can be repurposed, that's important in my mind to make certain we're using it effectively. And I did well through public schools when I grew up in Worcester. And I think public schools provide good education. And if the state says it wants you guys to provide good education to kids, it needs to put its money where its mouth is. That's the way I view it. Uh, there's no other way. I, I'm going to oppose more mandates, to be honest with you. I made that clear, that if they want to put more mandates in, that's going to burden you guys with administrative work, time, resources, money. I'm not in favor of that, unless you tell me you are in favor of it. Otherwise, I'm not in favor of that. But if they say they're going to put a mandate in and it makes sense and the stakeholders have buy-in and the state will fund it and actually do something, okay, I'm willing to, to not outright say no. But I've made it clear that I'm, I'm a no vote on a lot of unfunded mandates uh, unless they're willing to support. And that, that goes across the board for many things for town government, just not the schools, uh, to be honest with you. And that's why I have a number of bills put in to try to deal with that. Thank you. Any other questions? I knew you were going to have something. <laughs> I, was... uh, I thought I could skate by and Jacob wouldn't ask me anything. <laughs> I love that you've covered a lot, so we agree. You know, I think you've got the right idea when it comes to a lot of big proposals. I think, you know, if you're willing to reach out to our board and other boards in the district about any big education bills coming up and, and the superintendents to get our feedback, I think that would be great. I don't think that's something that hasn't been done a whole lot, but I think it's very important um, because often it doesn't seem like we have that much of a voice, you know, when it comes to a lot of education related bills. And then I guess the only other thing I would say with, with unfunded mandates and things is, and I think you're going in this direction, but whatever you can try to do in a bipartisan fashion so it has the votes, you know, and pick the, pick the ones you think can pass and then, <laughs> then back those because it really is a struggle, you know, um, getting these budgets across the finish line and making sure they are beneficial to the kids when you're, you know, looking to make cuts and you can't. There's so many parts of the budget you can't even touch because they're mandated. So yes, properly, you know? and I know I see that in my town, even though I'm not on the board of ed or board of finance, I'm one of those town officials that just seems to get dragged into many different things that go on. Mm -hmm. uh, and I haven't said no. So, <laughs> so it used to pile up my list of all sorts of things. You know, you know, there's a lot that goes on that's bipartisan mm -hmm. and that's common ground in the legislature. People don't see that. It's really the big issues that we have a lot of big disagreements on. And look, I'm mindful that, you know, you can, once you get the majority vote, these things get called up on the Senate floor and the House floor because the leaders know they have the votes. You don't bring these things up if you don't have the votes. That's usually the rule. But there's a lot that gets done bipartisan because a lot of these issues, I mean, I've been speaking with some of my fellow Democratic senators, some of them who I know, uh, and these are common issues. And so there's a lot of common ground. Now, may we disagree on some big things about philosophically how we view the role of government or how we want to spend the money and tax people or things like that. We do. And there's going to be some of those disagreements. But yes, very much, you know, I'm looking to do as much as I can, you know, bipartisan. And I think there's a lot of ground for that. Uh, and I've already been seeing some of it. But on the other hand, sometimes you just have to stand up and speak your mind and say what you think needs to be done to advocate for the people in your district, even if you know you don't have the vote. And 
I've already started to do that in some committees. Um, they give me the microphone and I can speak. So, but yes, trying to do things as much as I can collaboratively. And at the end of the day, you certainly want to get these the good things through and want to get the votes together. My sense is, is that for a lot of the towns, whether you're a Republican legislator or a Democratic, a lot of these issues are very common. And we're hearing the same thing from people in our towns. So trying to band together to move it forward, if we can get the numbers, quite frankly, leadership has to listen to it because then there's the numbers. And that's where a lot of that happens behind the scenes to try to get, you know, to move the needle. So I'm looking forward to doing what I can do, but I'm also realistic. It's it's a big ship there in Hartford. And, you know, it has a small rudder. So trying to move it is sometimes difficult because we just want to keep going in a certain direction. But, you know, I, this is a, this is an interesting year to see what we can do uh, to move things. And we'll see if we can take advantage of that and get some good things out of it. Thank you. Again, let me start by, by thanking you uh, for coming out here, but also for your service and being willing to step up to what is going to be a Herculean effort for the, the next few years and on, if, if possible. Um, you mentioned a couple of things just a few minutes ago that, that I found exciting. You know, you, you spoke about utilizing the existing money in, in different ways. Uh, and you spoke also about those core responsibilities uh, of government. You know, public education being one, public safety type of thing. And I'm excited to hear and to, to anticipate you taking that education mindset to those other areas. That, that if you take one domino upstream of public education and take a look at those things that directly affect our students' ability to learn the public safety, uh, the public health, you know, as we saw during the, the recent COVID uh, issues, the public health stop them. We're still trying to deal with some of the effects that went through as you, you hear Dr. Willard talk about some of the staffing issues that we're having now. So your presence on those other committees, uh, I think helps education as well. Um, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what you do and what the other members of, of your Senate do uh, to, to help them communicate, to help move us forward and, and continue to make us the, the state that we are. Uh, I will warn you, I am a big advocate towards communication. Uh, not just you coming here and talking to us, but us as a group and us as individuals communicating with you. So I'm gonna email you a lot. And I, I sincerely <laughs> hope that all of the members of your, uh, all of your constituents do the same uh, because I think you'll do something wonderful. For them. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that, uh, Tony. I'm a big advocate for communication. That's what got me involved in town government years ago was I was, Difficult to find out what was going on in my town. Woodstock's not a big town. We're 8,000 people. We're not, not that difficult to find, but things were being kept from the public. I was unhappy about it and started attending meetings. And then the selectmen said, hey, would you like to be on planning and zoning? And I'm like, I don't know what that is. And then I learned about it. And they put me on it. Uh, and I've been on it ever since. Uh, my role as chair, just so you know, in planning and zoning is I've been a big advocate of letting people in my town know what is going on, um, when we're having meetings, where the documents are that are public. Uh, I've even extended public hearings and the number of meetings on purpose to give people lots of opportunities to be heard and know what's going on. That's been my, one of my track records. In fact, I used to, for a long time, post all my votes and say, you want to know how I, how I voted in town government? Here's the list. And you can see it. And if you want to know why I did something, ask me. And I'm more than happy to. People did that. Um, as a senator, I know I'm going to be representing 13 towns. That's that's big. Um, but I still want to be doing as much communication as I can. I know I won't be able to come to every board of ed meeting every town uh, every month, but I would like to be able to be cycling through as much as I can, but also want to make certain that I can be keeping up in what's going on. But by all means, the way that communication works is I want to hear from people. I don't have all the answers. And are there things that go on in Tallinn that I don't may not know? Sure. But if I know about things and can be educated on the things that are important here, I can bring that when I'm in the legislature and say, hey, I'm not making this stuff up. Here, here are specific things that affect my towns. And I can speak to that as opposed to just having these general discussions that sometimes happen, but you're not really certain where you're going with that. 
Um, so the more I can hear, the better. I tell people I have no problem hearing from people. I, I hear all sorts of things over the years in town government from people, uh, some of which is outside of my jurisdiction. Uh, uh, so I'm happy to hear. Um, I can be reached through my Senate email. That's really more for my legislative aid and my team to be aware of things and to see things. Um, but I can also be reached otherwise. So I'm more than happy to hear, even if it's an FYI saying, hey, I heard that there's this bill going on. Is that true? And I may already know about it, or I can look into it, or someone can say, well, hey, I hear about this bill that's going through. Do you realize how this might affect Holland Public Schools? I'm sure the superintendent will let me know. Uh, but this is good for me to know because then I can say, well, hey, you know, why are we doing this this way? This is not good for the people of my district, and this is why. And we need to change it, or we need to stop it, or we need to do something else. So the more I can know what's going on, you know, the better. But the other is, I view myself as an advocate. I like promoting things. I do that in my town. Uh, I've had a long history of supporting the public schools in my town. I used to chair our Woodstock Education Foundation for some years uh, and raise money for uh, the school uh, programs that the school just couldn't provide. Uh, I like promoting things and saying, here are the good things that are being done. Because uh, too many times we hear about the bad things. It's good to promote the good things, like the award for the music teachers. Those are wonderful things. Any way that I can do to be of help in that regard, but also relay that to people in the state to say, you know, you if you if the Department of Education doesn't hasn't come out and talked with you guys or come out to see what's happening in the schools, here are some of the good things that are going on. Why aren't you guys coming out and seeing that firsthand and experiencing it? And I have no problem putting them to task. I've already in a, in a couple of uh, agencies have said, you're talking about a couple of my towns. Have you ever come out to like Chaplin or Hampton? Probably not. So why are you talking with me about certain things that you think aren't working? Get out to Chaplin and Hampton, meet with the folks. I'll join you. And you can see firsthand that they're actually doing a good job. And you, you're you wrong. And so those are the types of things I like to champion you know, and promote. So any of the good stuff, I'm, I'm more than happy to uh, you know, to promote. I think the more that people hear about the good things being done, and including the regulators in the state, that's good because they can be very siloed in their agencies and not always come out. I don't know how many times they've come out, say for Tallinn, to see what's going on. They just stay in their agencies. I have nothing against them personally, but if they're just there and not coming out, they're missing a lot. So I can be the one to to bring that to them, and I have no problem telling them and asking them. Join me, come on out, see what's going on, learn firsthand. Then you can start making decisions. So I'm happy to give that opportunity. Don't know if they'll take me up on it, but sometimes when you say it publicly in a meeting, uh, you put them on the spot and then they really don't want to say no <laughs> when you're up there asking. So I'm an advocate of making certain for those lines of communication. I think if the bureaucracy is going to be doing certain things, they should know what goes on in the towns. And if that means traveling out here, that's fine. I'll join them. Any other further? Well, I thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Um, maybe when you do get business cards, we could eventually. <laughs> I have ones virtual, but they haven't been printed yet. Evidently, just to let you know real quick, they printed with wrong information, wrong email, wrong phone number. <laughs> we picked it up. It was like, where did they get this from? And so we told them that. And evidently to cancel an order is quite a, an ordeal. So I'm told it's in the process of being canceled, but until it's officially canceled, we couldn't put the new order in. I don't understand their system. So I'm told that's being worked out this week. So hopefully maybe next week I'll get my uh, my uh, business cards. But by all means, uh, if, if the superintendent would be kind enough just to share my contact info, you have it. You know, you'll have it then. So maybe next time I'm here, I'll be able to give you my little comment. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. But thank you. Thank you. And no offense, I'll let you do the rest of your business. I'm going to hop on. I have a couple of Zoom meetings tonight to deal with public health committee. So I'm going to go home and get onto those. <laughs> if you're Zoom tired. <laughs> well, thank you for your PJs with your time. <laughs> well, some of the Zoom meetings fall when I'm working in the hospital. So I'm actually going to be there with my doctor's code and my stethoscope on it. Uh, so I'm in the middle of doing stuff, so we'll see if they like that. That would be great for public health.
Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's move on to the monthly financial report. Okay, so the next item is the monthly financial report. Uh, as you know, we have the first meeting of uh, each month. This is so uh, the first one is done by our new, uh, new business professional. We do have the budget at this point down to eighty six thousand fifty seven dollars and eighty cents, or point two one percent of the budget. Um, you know, we are in a situation where, again, we're watching special education expenses. Um, they are pretty big, and uh, our excess cost grants haven't come in yet. So I'll be talking about that um, a little bit more in a minute. Um, salaries are currently under budget at two hundred sixty-seven thousand um, one twenty, which is uh, your substitute code. And the balance is one ninety-eight under budget. Uh, the line's down by forty-four from last month. We do and are going through that fairly quickly. We are using a lot of substitutes, and that's also going to be part of what we talk about in the uh, overall budget for next year that we're experiencing a, a much, much higher than typical kinds of um, things going on where we need substitutes to, to uh, cover for people that are out for a variety of reasons. And you know, it's kind of all coming to a head right now. It also kind of dovetails with insurance in the conversation we're going to have regarding the budget later. <clears throat> uh, overtime expenses are under by 121. The encumbrance was cleared last month, um, caused the balance to increase by 14K. Stipends, code 150, are currently under budget by 82. Um, typical for this, and we mentioned this before, that not all stipends have been encumbered or paid for the year. Pay to play funds have not been fully collected, et cetera. Health insurance, severance, benefits 190, 200, 210, collectively under budget. Um, anticipated admin and TEA severance pay uh, were encumbered in December, about 90K. Newly and hired employees and retired employees uh, tried to bike up med. Medicare Social Security numbers is just code 220. Um, right now, currently under budget 77,000 as of December. Retirement course reimbursement and unemployment goes to 40, 250, 260 are all collectively under budget. All foreign course reimbursements have been filed and no, no unemployment claims have been filed yet. The available balance is 55,000 under, 26,000 more than last month. Uh, 24,000 was recovered for employment in December. Benefits consultant workers comp 27310 are currently under budget by five um, and 50,000 was encumbered during the month of November on the benefits uh, consultant line, which is 310. Professional educational services, this is over by 45 and increased to 33 from last month. Special education aids are mainly the result of why this is going over budget. The over budget balance is going to continue to increase and you're going to see that probably push us into almost close to negative zone until we get those um, excess costs um, reimbursements. Uh, one is coming in February, the other is coming in May. But we do have a lot of, of those expenses as we did last time. Legal audit tech is 340, or collectively under by 91. Um, repair, maintenance, custodial cleaning, et cetera, uh, 420, 430 continue to be spent as we go along. They're currently under budget by 181. Maintenance and custodial expenses are cyclical, as you know. Transportation is over budget uh, by about 313,000. Um, this again has to do with um, some of the transportation that we have to provide uh, for students. Uh, so, and it does relate to special education transportation. The excess cost payments will offset those and we'll see some of those balances even out, um, but we're watching that pretty carefully. The tuition code 560 is uh, also over by 922. Once again, um, this has to do with those uh, placements and tuitions. That is also going to be a very big cost driver in next year's budget as well. Uh, energy code uh, 620 expenses, as you know, transferred use of account beginning of the year. Textbooks are under budget by 67 because they haven't fully gone through the process of um, the order and identification process for that. That should happen fairly soon. Instructional supplies, uh, miscellaneous supplies, 600, 610, 690, 730 are collectively under budget by 112, down 45 from last month. Basic uh, rundown of our monthly budget. Any uh, questions from board members? No, I'll take item. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing for the monthly. 
Okay, thank you, Dr. Moore, for that. Okay. Let's just jump right into the big item. It's just a big item. Okay, so, so it is that time of year again where the superintendent's proposed budget is provided to you. And as you know, you will be um, chewing on this and coming up with the Board of Ed's adopted budget basically a month from now. Um, so the objective is to kind of look in, dig in, and then start throwing questions um, at me the way you have in the past. We have the budget submission link. It's all set up. It's ready to go. Um, that answer document is public right now. So when you send something to me to, uh, you know, as a question, that'll get posted onto that Q&A doc. That Q&A doc is public. So as you're doing that, you know, if you care about grammar, check the grammar lead, whatever is important to you, but that'll be, that's going to be, uh, that's what's linked from the site. So anybody can go there and click and they'll see as I get it, I'll move them over and then I'll put the answers in there. And that so as we, I answer it, that's all. Quick question about that. Because I know sometimes um, the questions could necessarily be uh, intertwined with the student or some, some yeah, if that's the case, I might interact with the individual and just say I'm, I'm redacting some piece of this, you know, or I might have to answer it in a in a way that does not, you know, that's sensitive to that matter. Perfect. So it is going to require me, you know, being a little more, um, you know, going through real carefully to make sure that I'm not inadvertently doing an outing, you know, like identifying someone in a situation, whether it's a personnel related matter or or a uh, Thank you. Uh, so, so it's all set to go whenever you're ready. Um, so after tonight, start looking at it. Um, this is linked online as soon as uh, this meeting's over tonight. I'll post it on the budget page so everybody can see it too. Usually, the board sees it first, um, and then um, I take that link that I sent you and make that public uh, and link it on the main site. Um, you know, the budget has a lot of pieces to it. I'm going to just highlight some of the most um, impactful and important things. Uh, a lot of our services, you already know, many of you have been on the instructional rounds. Many of you have seen and heard already things about pathways, or for graduate, and things like that. Um, this budget is an extremely, probably the most difficult budget year I've ever had. Um, we've had some of the most, you know, most uh, significant impacts to the budget before we even came out of the gate happened this year. So what I tried to do was I tried to, um, in my introduction, you know, I, you are all basically the same board members who have been here for a few years now. So whereas I was informing of different programs, things like that, what I did on this particular introduction is try to get right to the meat of the issue. Right now, 5.76 of the 5.92% budget is made up with those contractual obligations you see, um, fuel, diesel costs, transportation costs, and medical insurance. That's $2,404,606 of the increase. Um, and that increase is 2472000 That's made up in extremely difficult fixed costs. Um, I went through the budget and I tried to do a lot of uh, Due diligence, you know, I know the, the culture of the board and I've tried to go, you know, go into the things that I know this board has typically been interested in the past. A lot of things have been reduced to trend or lower than trend. Um, our positions have already been taken. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, well taken with respect to they're identified as potential reduction in force positions for the end of this year. Um, but this has been an extremely difficult budget year to try to mitigate without having major impacts on the quality of education. And so that's why um, for the first time I'm presenting a budget that's kind of closer to the sixth side of things, which usually I don't do. I could not find a way to do this any differently. And as it is, it does have some things in it that, um, you know, that are unfortunate. Um, but what I did manage to do is preserve the core area, you know, areas that I know uh, are going to help make sure that kids' welfare are uh, maintained. And that doesn't mean that anything here that is changing doesn't do that. It's just that, you know, right now, um, the social emotional support, social workers, and um, classroom and class sizes, intervention, things like that, those are, you know, they've been they're more important than ever coming out of the pandemic and maintaining. Um, you know, support for kids. 
So that's where I focused my energy and um, that's what I tried to help preserve here. So the chart here, uh, table in the beginning just shows you that 5.76 of the 5.92% budget is in fixed costs of insurance, transportation, fuel, and contractual obligations. Um, so in addition to that, during the process, um, just so you know how you know, kind of it works, there are many, many, many needs. So during the process, about um, 38 additional positions were requested of me. Um, none of them were fulfilled, um, but 38 were requested. Uh, in the past, I've had more time. And I, I you know, had a budget item on that in the agenda um, leading up to the budget, I think one of the prior years. Uh, and I can do that, but these 38 positions were teachers, um, full special and general education, custodians, maintenance workers, health teachers, paraeducators, interventionists, dean of students. Um, none of them were included because we just don't have it this year. Um, personnel reductions were made. Um, middle time, hey, middle time, a middle school paraprofessional, high school paraprofessional, uh, educational technology facility, uh, teacher facilitator, a middle school interventionist, a part-time high school child development teacher, a small um, portion of the SLP, of an SLP, about 0.27, um, that was not filled from this year, a uh, financial accountant position reduced from the superintendent's office, um, and a one-year short-term intervention position will not be renewed. Uh, it was utilized to, to help address a, a personnel situation. Uh, all educational technology code stipends are eliminated in this budget, and reductions are made to the ICMA, OPEB, course reimbursement, textbooks, PD, legal expenses. Um, also, reductions are made to instructional supplies, equipment, furniture, and fixtures. All educational technology investments were removed from this budget. My recommendation is the board funds those through the Educational Reserve Fund. Doing so would still leave $440,000 in that fund. Um, and that would be doing it without having to incur further staff reductions this year. Um, we did add some positions this year, but the ads were mainly to maintain what we already have. So for instance, um, one of our kindergarten teachers um, has to be moved over from grant to, uh, to our operating budget. So it's a portion of the teacher because some of the grant will still pick up the other portion. So we take on 0.6 FTE of that kindergarten teacher, and we take on the 1.0 social worker um, that are coming off grant. So those two are the only two things coming on in this particular budget cycle. Um, and then the, the rest of uh, what I mentioned prior is what's coming off. Um, now, like I said, uh, this is just the superintendent's proposed budget. These are recommended reductions in force for you. You're going to look at this and, you know, Talk about it, ask the questions, make your own determinations. But this is, um, these are the places that I thought would have the all things done will have a impact that is undesirable. But these particular things, uh, you know, will will not have uh, the same profound impact that other things could. So um, these were chosen carefully, and um, and it was not obviously something that I want wanted to do. But it is something that I think, given the circumstances, um, given the budget that we were handed, uh, the first budgets that I started looking at without doing any kinds of reductions at all, you're looking at the 10%, 9%, 8%. It was a lot to get it down to the 5.92. And as you can see, the 5.76 of it, it are those expenses listed in the end. Um, so that's, that's roughly it. Uh, I think you know the rest, and we'll talk a lot to you about various programs we have. I just included a narrative about pathways and STEAM, and you know, I'm not going to read that. You've, you've learned about it in the past. Some of you have come on instructional rounds and seen it. Um, and generally, I include basic data that gives you contextual information about, you know, district, um, demographics, that type of thing you have. Um, teacher contracts are very favorable for us. Our bargaining unit contracts are favorable. The negotiating teams did a good job. Um, teachers are by no means overcompensated. Um, and the uh, um, agreements, bargaining unit agreements we had were below the average uh, for the state, uh, getting the most current data, which I was able to get a day or two ago. Um, it's still below uh, 37, 54 districts for teachers, 37 districts for admin. Uh, we're, we're below the median uh, of settlements for both groups. 
So the negotiating team has done a good job. Everybody has done a fantastic job here. It's just we got hit in a pretty bad, bad year for insurance and fuel um, and other expenses that are very difficult to control. And I do expect that you know you'll be throwing questions at me with some detail and I'll extrapolate. Um, the object budget information, as you know, a roll up from multiple accounts in order to be able to provide it in a concise way. So as you go through it, um, you know, I'll take whatever questions you have um, on the forum. I'll just aggregate you know, and answer them and break apart every, you know, all the details that you need with respect to that. I think you'll find as you go through it that you know, we, we've been, a lot of work has been done. Now, now there's some hard conversations that probably need to occur you know, going forward in the coming months. Another thing to note on uh, grants, we did have a kind of, uh, because of COVID and everything, we had a sort of golden age of grants and you can see it on the budget funding estimates page. Um, we were back, back to where we were pre-COVID with grants. We were in that $700,000 kind of zone. We're back to that 700, 790. We had a few years where we were 1.4 million, you know, and above a million in grants. That's not the case now. You know, that type of thing. So we will see certain, you know, progression of trying to adjust for that type of thing. Um, enrollment is going going to be going up over the next few years. You'll notice that on the enrollment page, I, I provided a different kind of table than I have in the past. And I'll put together the entire enrollment report that I've typically done, it's that time this time, do it just for um, a meeting, but I will post that all to the budget site as well. What you'll see is that, and you'll see it a little bit in this one, um, our enrollment is now stabilizing and gonna start to head up. Uh, and head up over the next uh, few years, uh, probably a decade, especially in the K-5 zone, which is why we want to make sure we're careful not to uh, have any real negative impacts there uh, or anywhere else for that matter, but we want to keep an eye on it. Um, so you'll see the trending is, is whereas in the last few years, it was kind of dipping down. Now it's got it's got the exact opposite. This board's inheriting and increasing in a moment for probably the you know, remainder of it. Decade period type of thing. Yeah, the enrollment chart that I like. I think that's that's good to see. Yeah. <laughs> One other note, just in case people weren't my uh, aware of it, sometimes the agendas, you know, there's so much on there. You're also talking about the transportation contract in the executive session. Um, the reason why I keep looking at my phone is not because you know I'm getting exciting text. It's basically that um, the the attorney who is going to do that executive session for us. I'm just making sure that when you're ready, I give her enough head time to be able to, to jump on. So that's why I'm kind of not looking for more exciting text. No, I have time <laughs> so, you know, as you said, it's going to be our job to, you know, pick through this over the next month or so. So, get plenty of questions. I'm not going to ask a lot of them tonight. Um, but I did want to just touch upon one thing, though, because, you know, in preparation for this document, I was, you know, expecting to ask some questions about salary, some about transportation, especially given the conversations we've had. But that insurance number really hits you like a freight train. Um, I know we talked a little bit about that earlier, but could you, I don't know, could you give us like a little bit of a brief rundown on that tonight? Because that is, you know, $1.2 million is a very significant part of this increase. You know, we've, we've had many meetings about what might be happening here. And I guess my my hope and my my feeling is, and there is some reason to believe this, that that's a blip but that everybody, many people put off things mm -hmm. during COVID that they just went ahead and started. So we don't have a lot that are going above our stop loss, which means that there's you know not a lot costing millions, but there's a lot of people doing a lot of things. So there's a lot of, 
things under 175,000 that are happening, but they're all, you know, many things are happening. And so it just, we trended massively upward. Um, you know, we, we are self-insured and we've done a very good job of keeping ourselves in a very good place. So there's nothing to fear from that point of view. But having said that, um, we already talked with the town and came up with everything that we could possibly do to offset. You know, this is the result of those efforts. Um, we are seeing some downward, some hopeful trend. And so my hope is that this is a blip because right after the pandemic, people uh, had you know, put off elective things without doing them. It's also coupled with people that do have serious medical problems as a result of the pandemic. Um, but I, I expect in you know, the future years for it to stabilize, but this is a particular infection. And there is some hope we are seeing some trend change that at least you know, give us hope, but not, not to help us. Right. Yeah. But it's like the, all of last year's budget increase. I don't know <laughs> in one number. So, um, yeah, no, I, I had to ask about that and probably ask for some follow up over the next month or two um, with that. But I think you're right. There's going to be a lot of conversations. And unfortunately, I think it's probably going to continue through May with, with this sort of increase. If you think about it, yeah, that's 3%. Right there. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'll save the rest for it. Later. Okay. Everybody, anybody else? A long month. Yes, yes. Okay. And I just a lot of stuff. Yeah. Okay. So the link is up for questions to be posted. Correct. Yep, should be ready. And then I will just keep in mind as they come and they post them, there are live off the site. Okay. Yeah, so just real quick, Dr. Wheeler, just from a high level, and I, I know it's probably online, but over this next month, obviously we're going to talk it in these type of sessions and in an FFC, but what other opportunities are there on the calendar to get together and go over it? So you do have in your budget calendar, you know, take a look at that tonight, that's on the site. You have your budget dates listed. You can add more, um, you know, I'm here for you, whatever dates you wanna add. Um, you just to asterisk again, next week, you're doing the rotation activity. Uh, I talked a little bit about that prior, but these are um, you know, where we're gonna be at the high school. You can ask the uh, cross centers anything you want. That's in person. That's in, per that's in person now. Um, yeah, it's going to be the same setup as last year. Correct, same setup. You do it first, and then the community workshop. Any community members who would like to do that, uh, do that after you. Um, and just a just a quick a statement to people: that is a hybrid meeting, but it's a hybrid workshop meeting for those of you at home. So um, that might be a better one if you're able to attend in person. To attend in person, you know, and, and then wait for the community workshop because you'll see the board begin the meeting and then everybody breaks into you know this like workshop so, the access and so it, yeah you, you you know tip it is hybrid but you're not going to see a whole lot you see a lot of people moving around you know so if you know i recommend any public um you know come and then participate in the community part of it too but that's your most recent one coming up you do have a capital meeting February 9th, where they're going to go over all the capital. And then in your budget calendar, you have the rest of what's available, plus anything you decide to add, plus your report. Thank you, sir. Is that budget calendar on, um, easily accessible on the? Yeah, yeah, actually, if you go right to the page of budget, the very top one is budget, the budget calendar. Okay. Um, but if you need it, I can send out the links. And... Maybe that would be helpful just to have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Questions, comments? Okay. Let's move on to the committee liaison afterwards. So, in the, in the month of December, a lot of things were canceled. So, I'm not even quite sure what needed to transpire for committees. Um, my curriculum was canceled, but the mental health committee did have its first meeting, um, mental health task force, I should say, of the year uh, this Monday. And we're starting to review the results of the survey that we did. 
Um, so that's going to be a two part thing. Uh, first one was two days ago. The second one will be on the 23rd. Um, that's in person. We do that at the congregational church. So if anyone wants to attend um, and participate in that, they're welcome to. It's been very interesting so far. Um, and from there, we'll, we'll look at that and we'll put our final recommendations. So I encourage anyone who's interested to do that. Are those results going to be compiled? Maybe a one pager, I'll look with me, Griffin, like just so uh, we can see what's going on with the mental health. Uh, with how it's reported? I don't know if it's a, going to be a one pager, but I was sent um, a very nice PowerPoint deck of what was presented. Um, I can share that with you if you'd like. Oh, that would be great. Yes, thank I you. can also send that to everyone. I'd be great. interested. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Keep in mind on that PowerPoint, some of the data is not Colin data. That's correct. Okay. Because mm -hmm. you may roll page uh, length to length, but they did not have some uh, data for Colin, so they used surrounding communities. Just so I think it was mostly the same sort of Yeah, so, some was in there for comparison. Mental health says as well. Yeah, but I, mean, I think it's fairly well marked, so. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm taking a tiny step backwards and related to FFC. When are we voting on this budget? You well, you you really don't vote on this one. You well, on when course. do we when do we vote on now? <laughs> about a month from now. I think it's. I have to look at the it's calendar. You are February eighth. Yep, it's a, a, almost a month from now. You are voting on it on that first Wednesday meeting. Okay. I'm so you'll you know, and you vote on yours. Then that gets passed to the town council. Then the town council decides whether that can be supported or not. And then we have to decide whether we make cuts based on what they say or we support entirely. I'm just looking, thinking ahead. So I have an FFC meeting scheduled for January 18th and February 1st. But the FFC meeting on February 1st, if we have any discussion, there's no time to come back to the full board before the vote. So I'm just going to throw that out to you guys. If, you, if something should be changed, if you want to turn the FFC special meeting into a full board meeting, I don't know if that's a better way to go, but just a thought. Um, that was the first you said? Yes, I had already added that a while ago. So actually, I think it's listed as a FFC regular meeting because I, I added it before we did the whole year for it. Yeah, I'm not opposed to that. Um, Another meeting for FFC. Um, so I don't know if you want to. everyone change the thumbs up? First one. Okay, but four yeah. of us were already planning on February 1st anyway. I don't know if we just want to. So maybe we can yeah. switch that out on uh, that for that February 1st, make it a um, board meeting. So then your FFC next week is right before. Yes. Okay. Which, yes. So it'll be probably won't be as involved <laughs> so we only have a week but we'll, we'll get there <laughs> we'll find stuff to talk about all right turf fields <laughs> no, i wasn't even going to bring that up <laughs> yeah. okay so if you can make that change on the calendar for the first mm -hmm. and get that on there on the yeah okay um so back to Liaison. Um, Chan, I know she says she had PTO, so we're going to go over there. Okay. So for TEPTO, the recent Lyman Pie fundraiser and Castle fundraiser were very successful, as well as the Frosty Fest, which was filled with tons of happy families painting together. Um, having parents and students browsing the book fairs together was also a wonderful return to normalcy. They are also soon beginning their spreading kindness one sign at a time fundraiser where kindness signs designed by students will be displayed the week of February 8th, Kindness Week at both schools and on compliment day, March 1st. Flyers are going out this week providing information on sign pickup date and cost. So keep a lookout for that. TEPTO thanks all of those who have supported and attended their past fundraisers. TEPTO is hosting a fifth grade winter wonderland dance on Friday, January 13th from 6 to 8 p.m and a fourth grade snowball dance on Friday, February 24th from 6 to 8 p.m. Both are in the TIS cafeteria. Tickets are sold at the door for both events. 
um, for $5 per student and snacks will be sold inside as well. Students must be accompanied by an adult for both events. For TMS, the TMS PTO hosted a staff appreciation breakfast on December 21st. I wanna thank all the parents who donated items for the event. They have also opened a TMS Falcon Spiritwear store. The link to order can be found in the January 9th digital backpack. Information for the upcoming Munson's Chocolate fundraiser will be coming out shortly. And then just as a note, this isn't PTO related, but yearbook orders are due by March 1st and are $20 each. And that information is also linked in the digital backpack. For boosters, they're hosting a charcuterie demo at the Stafford Cidery on Monday, January 23rd at 6 p.m. Cost is $55 per ticket, which includes a nine inch palm leaf platter you will fill at the event, a jar of honey, a honey dipper, a step-by-step -step instruction guide, and a pint from Stafford Cidery. You can find the link to buy tickets on the Boosters Facebook page. Um, also, the deadline to purchase and submit a senior tribute ad for the yearbook is Friday the 13th, this Friday. That link is also available on the Boosters Facebook page. And then I hear overall that there are discussions about having another Harlem Wizards game, which will benefit all the schools, which is really exciting. So stay tuned for more information on that. That was fun when we went to that a few years That was great. It was a full house. It was, it was very successful. Um, any other committees right now? No. Okay. Let's close that out. Sure. Uh, board action on uh, public participation. So at this time, um, I will open it up to the public participation online. If you could please raise your hand and you'll be provided two minutes um, by Dr. Willett. And if you could list your name and address for the record, and it has to just pertain to what is actually on the agenda. So if anyone wants to raise their hands at this time. Okay, going once, going twice. Okay, I will close out the public participation. Um, I will entertain a motion for the executive session. Move that we enter our executive session to discuss an attorney client privileged memorandum that discusses options available to the board regarding its transportation RFP. Second. Any discussion about this before we do a roll call vote? No. Okay. So, if you want to just state your name, the vote. Thank you, right? Jade Redford, aye. Christina Plord, aye. Griffin, aye. Jacob, aye. Sophia, aye. Jana, aye. Can we vote aye? Ben Galishan, aye. Aye as well. Therefore, we will be entering into executive session at 820.